Right, so I thought I'd come back to this uh, Fluke 5200A, which I haven't been able to touch for a, a month and a half. Um, now, when I last worked on this, I was playing with the parent board, and I found that if I ran it on the BIOS uh, setting option, I actually had output from the unit. Now, whilst I was doing that, um, it stopped working completely again. <laughs> and also, the operate light on the front panel went off and wouldn't come back on again. So I believe it's a power supply fault, and I pulled the power supply regulator card out here. As you can see, I've still got my temporary bits on there, um, which have been working fine, but the temporary. And um, now that BIOS setting, which runs on a power amp, that runs off the 30 volt plus and minus 30 volt supply, and that is these two transistors here. Um, and there's a burnt resistor right there. Um, so it's a couple of tantalums there, you've got transistors and resistor there, which is burnt. One of them's burnt. And the one which is burnt goes to Q12, which is the negative 30 volt rail, which ties in with the belief that there's, a neg there's an issue with a negative 30 volt um, output on the power amp. So that's a negative, uh, sorry, the negative amplifier side. The positive amplifier side seems to be okay because it's getting pulled negative. Um, because you get like a minus hundred and odd volts output DC um, when you got an output on that thing, so it's pulling down like a short transistor. And it, now, in fact, the negative supply has been affected, and this means that's probably likely to be the case. So it's overloaded it, but that's, that resistor is burnt. So I'm going to just test these two transistors and see if they work, uh, or whether it's just that resistor which is gone. Um, so we'll have a look at that. And I mean, as you can see, I've really done some lot of temporary work on this board <laughs> lots of temporary work I've got the right part for that now I could put that in I suppose um, that is working absolutely fine that is working fine so is this one so I'm actually trying to sleeve them in there and just maybe you know tidy them up I was actually thinking about mounting that on a proper stand off heat sink and, and secure it to that and mount it on the board properly somehow but I'll worry about getting the thing working properly first before I tidy it all up I'll tidy it all up later on. Also got the calling fan on here to help it because of the fact that this one here is probably underrated now. It used to be like this. It's now one of these. So it's heat sinking isn't good enough. So it's um that's just helping to get some air across it. And also with these as well, this is the same deal as one of those things. So uh, this one here doesn't get warm at all. But these do get a bit hot. So I'm actually thinking about heat sinking those, even though they aren't factory heat synced. At least not that I could tell. So um anyway, I'll probe these and we'll See what we get. Okay, so I've got the probes to the Q12. Let's see what happens. What do we get? Common anode diode network. Mm hmm. I'm not sure that's correct, actually. Yeah, let's just try the other one and we'll see what we get. I'm guessing Q12 may be damaged. Um, I'm not sure I've got anything to replace it with actually. I'm going to have to look into that. Let's just try and hook onto the Q9, which is the positive counterpart. So one's MPN, one's PNP. If I can get the probe on there, it'd be excellent. It's a bit tight to get the probes in here. The middle one's the hardest one to get onto. Uh, try and get through there. And I'm not sure I can hook onto the middle one. Might have to do it from the back of the board. Hold it on. Okay, let's try that. Let's uh, just hook that on there like that. Okay. Common cathode diode network. This gives it the same thing. Yeah. Okay. So. Maybe that transistor is okay. It's just it's supporting both parts as the same, well, the same equivalent. Um, so they they might be okay. Might just be that diode there, which is now snapped. All right. So because um, I was just levering in the area. So it might be lucky there. Might just be that um, sorry that diode that resistor. So I'll, I'll replace that resistor. Um, let's find out what the thing is first. Let's get my meter here running on two wire resistance. Both of those resistors are exactly the same. Of course, I'll look up the service manual too, but if this makes sense, then I'll just do that. That says 29 ohms. Yeah, 
29 ohms. So, mm -hmm. so I'll replace those resistors and maybe that'll be what it needs. Um, so there was a 30 volt supply is running from, so that is those. Uh, I suppose I could have a probe around on the other parts just to double check they're not blown, but I think they're probably okay. Um, there was no obvious bangs or pops or smoke or anything like that, it just stopped working. So, uh, you can hopefully see that. Get the lighting right. Hold on, bring it up a bit. So you can see that. Hopefully, you can see that was just the just there, it's broken. Um, so, that's the one which has failed. Uh, they're interesting looking resistors, I'm not quite sure if they're special ones or something, but I'll have to have a look and see what it says at the service manual anyway. Okay, so the uh, part I'm looking at here is this area. Just to zoom in slightly more and make it a bit easier for you to see. Now, Q12 is the transistor I was testing just now, and there's Q9 here, and there's R21 and R16. So R16 ones are still intact which measured 29 ohms, it's supposed to be 20 ohms so it looks like it's gone slightly off value and R21 is one which is burnt out, also supposed to be 20 ohms so I replaced both of those I think and then um, reinstate the power supply and um, then I can go back to trying to repair the power amp before I've got some parts turn up so I might be able to um, actually get that going probably now, we'll see so that's the plan um, we can only hope that this is all that's damaged is blown those two resistors, it's obviously act like fuses. These these seem to be okay. So there's no other signs that I can see of, of any damage, so uh, hopefully that's all good. Alright, let's get these resistors out and uh, see what we go. Now I actually pushed the other resistor and it snapped as well, so it's probably already weakened. But uh, we'll get them out and we'll go from there. Warning, noisy. Whoops, I've got to 31st. Okay. Half it's already dropped out, there's one there. Oh, two halves of different ones. Let's get the other ones. Tweezers. Uh, tweezers, where are they? Here we go. Slowly get my room organised here. Slowly. Not glacially slow. Um, my house still hasn't been fixed. It was, it's now been, what, six weeks? And my house hasn't even been touched yet. So it's a bit frustrating having to wait for the repair stuff to happen. Insurance company is still getting quotes on different builders. Always great fun, isn't it? Yeah. So these were spaced off the board, obviously because of um, heat dissipation. So I'm going to do the same thing. Now I've got similar size resistors. I mean, the original ones are probably one eighth watt. These are quarter watt resistors, so um, they can take a bit more. But obviously, these are meant to be acting like fuses. So I'll try and do the same kind of thing. So I should pop these in and try and stand these off the board as well. Um, but yeah, so if I can get them to look as tidy, I don't know yet. But, uh, let's just try and get these about the same heights and try and get them tidy. I might have to sort of solder one end and just fit around the other one, I don't know. But there we go. Just turn that one off. Just turn that one off. Yeah, well, it's kind of right. I'll just solder on end and bend them out. Uh, a bit of tiny iron if I want to do that. That'd be really helpful, wouldn't it? So yeah, the um, the house is progressing extremely slowly. Like it's not. So it's it's a frustrating time right now, waiting for things to actually happen before I can actually get my house fixed and back into it and so on um, so it's a bit annoying to say the least especially when it's the height of summer and it's getting approaching 30 degrees during the day here um, it's just getting too bloody hot there's no respite from the heat 
because the um, you know the garage isn't insulated and the motorhome isn't as well insulated as it could be because it's you know a bit of a vehicle it's not really designed to be to worry about that unless the engine's running in which case it's got air conditioning but we can't really run the engine all the time just to stay cool can we um, it's not really practical there's a similar just trying to get this matched up a little bit better so look nice and tidy unlike the rest of the board um, but yes that's what it is so it's bloody hot it's very uncomfortable trying to get to sleep at night is a pain because it's just so hot so um, a friend of ours then there's a um, it's a cooler unit it's not actually a air conditioner I think it just uses like water vapor to cool the air and passes through a water screen or something to um, chill it which we actually used for the first time last night and it's um, it seemed to work actually it doesn't it's not like wonderful but it just takes the edge off a little bit drops it by a few degrees which is nice you know uh, okay so that's those in there it'd certainly be good nice uh, good to get back into the house again and actually have the air conditioning to use and and what have you so that side's not solid as well, so I think it needed flux on that side. Stick some down there. Let's resolder that side again. That looks better. That looks better. Yeah, some improvement. Definitely that. Yeah, that's an improvement. So, uh, hopefully that will restore the power supply operation. I'll give it a clean up and I'll refit it, take out the power amplifier board and see if it, the rest of it functions again like it was before. And then at least I've gone back to where I was before it blew. Now I can start looking at the power amplifier and uh, those parts which arrive to uh, try and fix that up. And I seem to have lost my toothbrush which I use for cleaning PCBs. Yeah, uh, it'll turn up. Right, I've got player plugged in. I haven't tried turning it on yet. I'll just get everything make sure it's all ready to go. Uh, yeah, because they all seem to be right because I'm using that. Right. Fingers crossed there's no smoke and stuff hopefully. There's a bit of hair. Cat's been around. I just want to see if the operator light comes on. If the operator light comes on, then the power supply is back to where it was before. And then I can do other testing. Uh, it takes 30 seconds for it to warm up and actually get to that stage. Gives me a chance to look for any smoke. <laughs> or anything else going wrong. That fan I replaced with is, um, is definitely quieter than the original. Okay, standby lights on, operate lights on, great, power supply is back up again. Cool, so that should be good. So what we'll look at now is plugging this uh, power amplifier card in and hooking up to the front and see if it actually operates or not because I'm suspecting that transistor is the only fault that's left with it. I don't know. It <laughs> There's probably other stuff which I haven't found yet, but I need to get this card working before I can go any further anyway. <laughs> 